Hello and welcome to Pop Profiles. There's a lot of bad boys in the world of rap, so we're pretty high to have the good kid in the building. Kendrick Lamar is the hottest MC in the game. Don't believe me? Well, I would say ask his fans, Kanye West, Eminem or Jay-Z, but that's going to be hard for you. This man has them on speed dial. Not only do his peers love him, but the masses have splashed out on his releases too. Let's dive right in and find out where Kendrick Lamar began his journey. He said he was a good kid from a mad city. LA's Compton neighborhood can certainly be a crazy place, and that's where the baby Kendrick was brought up. His mother named him after her favorite singer, Eddie Kendricks, so it was destiny that he would soon be singing too. Kendrick Lamar comes from Compton, which is an area people associate with gang violence quite a lot of the time due to uh, hip-hop and film culture. He was a really good kid and he went to uh, college and was a grade A student and that was something I think he was really proud of and obviously came from quite a solid family background. He has said himself he knew he was in a unique um, and advantageous position to grow up with both parents and it gave him an insider's view of that lifestyle without being a part of it. I think it was a really significant moment when Kendrick Lamar got to see his idols, Tupac Shakur and Dr. Dre, filming California Love in his neighborhood, in Compton. Kendrick's gone on record saying that he just loved that day, watching the two guys perform in front of the camera, seeing how a music video came together, and that moment stuck with him and resonated with him for the rest of his life. It must have really given him that realization that that wasn't that far away from where he was and something that he could actually achieve. Posing a threat to the charts, Kendrick released his first mixtape. So when he was 16, he brought out his first mixtape, which is kind of like the SoundCloud of today, and he got handed around by people and ended up at Top Dog Entertainment, which had a huge back catalogue of uh, similar artists, and he got off his first record deal. Top Dog helped their top signing secure chart success with his fifth mixtape, Overly Dedicated. The song was really about sort of glamorizing gangster rap, you know, and street crime. At the end, though, of the song is this sort of title that just says, Ignorance is bliss, we do not know what we do, along those lines. It was a real kind of stop moment, a real reflection, and it really showed he had a sort of message to really bring to this genre. And this was the track that brought Kendrick Lamar to the attention of Dr. Dre, one of his childhood heroes, who then uh, decided he wanted to work with him in the future. Cause ignorance bliss. Everything that you do. Gangster, he is a sort of gangster, you know, because this is a gangster story, but a gangster with a difference because this is a gangster with a conscience. Visions of Martin Luther staring at me. If I see it, how he seen it, that will make my parents happy. No one could ignore Kendrick. Rapper J. Cole got behind him to help produce his first album. The single High Power began a succession of song titles with strange spellings. The song High Power is about the social movement that Kendrick Lamar uh, kind of follows, like almost a religion. Frightening, so frightening enough to drive a man insane. I need a light. High Power is spelt with three eyes, and they stand for heart, honor, and obey. And it's all about sort of being really graceful, holding your head high, being a good man. And sort of in that world, that was the, the kind of real sort of primary message. It got everybody focusing on the lyrical content of Kendrick's records and the fact that he's a man with a brain and with something to say. Build your own pyramids, write your own hieroglyphs. Just call it high power. Nothing less than high power. Working with J. Cole was the first time that the kind of the first emergings of the Black Hippie Collective came together. So it was the beginning of a new phase of, for his career as well. Throw your hands up for high power. Black Hippie were not your usual hippies in the 60s flower power sense. Formed of Kendrick, Ab Soul, J Rock, and Schoolboy Q, these boys were bringing back West Coast rap in a big way. The track ADHD helped Kendrick stand out from the rest. ADHD is uh, Kendrick Lamar's commentary on the high drug dependency of the 80s generation. 
Adobe. Most specifically, medication drugs, and uh, it's his kind of way of highlighting that and how that generation is slightly set apart and unique in that way. When your age don't exist, like whoa. Recognize my life. With being crowned the new king of the West Coast, big names got in touch. The game got Kendrick on board to feature on this track. It was a really big moment for him. It was probably the most high-profile collaboration that he's had at that point. You could not get two more drastically different rappers in terms of style. The game built his entire career on being a hardened street gangster, shot, being in a coma, all that kind of thing. Kendrick Lamar always very overtly said he's not. He's a witness to this and as such can give you an insider's guide. But what they both do is they're both very, very proud of where they come from. With the city, he had a guest verse and he really sort of rose to the challenge. It must be quite daunting to like be on these huge sets and with all these huge artists. And he really just was very unique and very himself and he flowed wonderfully and he really, really stood out as like the most exciting thing for me on the record. Not wanting to miss out, J-Rock asked Kendrick to feature on his chart smash, Hood Gone Love It. From Compton to Baltimore, how am I kill it? I buy this is interesting because it was such a sort of in your face and it was quite aggressive sometimes in verses. And we got to Kendrick Lamar's part, it seems just like sunshine. He brings this kind of warmth and that feeling that you want to get to know him as well. So yeah, that was a real highlight. I'm putting together on top of my back and I live in the back of the jungle. Lions, tigers, bears, oh my. Who's Gonna Love It with J-Rock is uh, very much a kind of celebration of where they're from in Compton. They've worked together for a while and this is one of many collaborations that Kendrick Lamar and J-Rock have done. The gift for the future, yeah, I said it. Thug life, good kid, mad city, mad respect, representing the hard It's life. a celebration of West Coast hip-hop again, which is something that, that he does, but it's a much more upbeat party star track. This song comes out sampling the brilliant Pointer Sisters. It was a very clever single. And the focus was once again on the talent of Kendrick Lamar. Well, the hood gone love Kendrick. So with much anticipation, he released the single Swimming Pools Drank. And what a splash it made. What followed was an album that took him to the next lead. Kendrick Lamar's album, Good Kid, Mad City, was really successful. Uh, Grammy nominations, including for Best Album, and one of the biggest selling albums of the year, it was a critical and commercial success. And this at the time was Kendrick Lamar at his best, announcing to the world of hip-hop that he had arrived. Why you baby sitting on it two or three shots? I'ma show you how to turn it up a notch. First you get a swimming pool full of liquor. For me, the standout Kendrick Lamar single to date is Swimming Pools Drank. I mean, this record got airplay everywhere. Every club played this single. It was an enormous hit record that really helped take him to the next level. Kendrick Lamar's single, Swimming Pool Drank, is about alcohol and the consequences of it. Uh, in it, he first references his grandfather's drinking and subsequent death. He also talks about his own drinking and about the kind of peer pressure of alcohol within the culture that he's in. He talks about things that kids and young people across the world can identify with as opposed to just sort of gang life and violence. No one was going to ruin this man's vibe, and to prove a point, he wrote this song. To you, that's a quick check with all disrespect. Let me say this, say this, say this. I am a sailor. He plays the narrator in this track, emceeing about his life story, but he's talking about an individual that's had a big impact on his life. We don't know who that person is. He won't reveal in any interviews. 
The video for this song is really interesting. Um, it starts with a funeral in a church, and then the congregation moved to a field where a party happens, kind of in celebration of this person's life. And then there's a really abrupt ending to it where it cuts to a black screen and the words death to Molly come up. And Kendrick Lamar said this was in reaction to uh, the what he saw as being too much promotion lyrically of MDMA, uh, which is known as Molly in hip hop culture at the time. And um, it all added to the impact and the allure of who is this young man who has something to say. Don't kill my vibe. Poetic Welcome back to Pop Profiles. If you've just joined us, you've missed out on the rise of Compton's poet Kendrick Lamar. But don't worry, there's more to come, including this chart smash. Better yet, with your friends and them. I really want to know you all. I really want to show you. The single for Poetic Justice by Kendrick Lamar is really dark. There's a scene where he's flirting with a really pretty girl at a party. P.S. And then suddenly there's gunshots and he goes to try and save her, but he's too late. Every release that he's put out since that sort of collaboration with Dre especially just seems to be just nailing his unique sound so much more. And it makes me just really listen to his words. He's so clear with his diction and he's fascinating to listen to. I really hope you play this, cause oh girl, you test my patience with all these seductive photographs and all these one-off vacations. You've been what both Kendrick Lamar and what Drake both do is their wordsmiths. And having that level of insight and intricacy really, really works. And it is, it's well, I mean it's one of Kendrick Lamar's best tracks. Every time I write these words, they become a taboo. Making sure my punctuation curve, heavy letter hits true. It has his storytelling ability in that that's what Kendrick does. He tells stories, but he's incredibly verbally dexterous and can change the speed and the rhythm of his flow. Poetic Justice was the fourth hit from the album Good Kid, Mad City. We can both be insane. A fatal attraction is common. It has sold over a million copies in the US. And for being such a good kid, the Grammys awarded him with seven nominations. Sex drive when you swerve, I want that interference. It's coherent, I can hear it. Drake gave Kendrick another call to be the support on his tour. Here he met ASAP Rocky in Two Chains, and the four piece released this pretty good but bad mouth single. What is so great about this song is that you just put four very hot, exciting rappers together and give them each a verse. It makes it great to listen to, and it also combines four different fan bases. Girl, I know you won't did. Girl, I'm Kendrick Lamar, aka Benzis to me just a car. It was a huge success. That track got them their first top ten hits, and uh, was a massive smash at that time. Listen what the crystal ball say, Holly, Barry, Holly, do you holla back? I'll do you. The collaborations kept coming. Kendrick and fellow black hippie Schoolboy Q reunited for this smash. This your favorite song. Translation, when I keep my me, I see. He opens up his verse by rapping in Spanish. Um, which, I mean, hey, hats off to him for that. Let's get it nice like this, summer night like this. Sword in my hand, I fight like this. Kendrick Lamar hooked up with School by Q for the track Collard Green, which was uh, another extension of his Black Hippie Collective. Now, as a collective, they've yet to release anything altogether, but there's quite a few examples of a few of them working and releasing some really good singles. Wait, hold up, is that you? With them big old thighs after school. Uh -huh. J305, I gave me high five when I said I'm in high pursuit. Rapper T.I. got Kendrick on board for this soulful release. And that shot my pride, I tried to improv, but no freestyle, I never do. You're looking for the with the tallest fetish. Even though the track didn't get released initially because they couldn't clear the samples, it was still a very articulate, very clever record. There's a soulful groove. I smelled it, tried to make you mine. 
tried to make some time but i ain't got the time or the patience to stop and wait the line they're both looking back at a moment where they've been kind of spurned or betrayed by a girl and sharing those stories and it's that nice kind of storytelling track uh, which i think makes it quite successful when i get home now i got options fast forward wait is that you with them big old thighs after school and your three kids and three baby daddies in car note that's over you Tell me that I'm famous, tell me that my name is Biggest Venus, Jupiter and then Uranus. The cover on this single may have been scary, but like the fire on his head, this collaboration was hot. Kendrick Lamar knows the power of a good collaboration, and one example of that is when he uh, hooked up with Tech 9 for the track Fragile. Putting my heart and my soul in these lines, telling me platinum and gold all the time. Which is a really interesting one, there's a lot of light and shade in that track, and it's it gives them both a chance to kind of vent at the music critics. Songwriters and artists write from the heart, from the soul, and when it's critiqued by people that haven't been there or haven't experienced it, it's really hard for the artist to take sometimes. So this was all about that and all about the process of having art judged. And ironically, the critics loved this one. But despite seemingly collaborating with every rapper under the sun, Kendrick confused us when he spat a controversial verse on Big Sean's Control. Kendrick Lamar's verse on Big Sean's Control was quite a controversial moment. In it, he calls out 11 other rappers, including Drake and ASAP Rocky, and says that he's going to lyrically murder them. He also claims to be the king of New York, as well as the West Coast, which obviously upset quite a few people. Uh, and in response, there were a lot of diss tracks came out. Like all things that are controversial, it just raises his popularity and people talking about him and the interest. And his Twitter followers raised by 500% overnight. I don't think anyone really took it seriously as an attack. All these guys have worked with him and continued to work with him. Eminem, Andre 3000, the rest of ya. Hey, Eminem may have taken a beating on the track, but Slim Shady had no beef with Kendrick. Instead, he asked Kendrick to feature on his album and tour with him. Kendrick may have ruffled a few feathers that year, but not as many as this next man. Robin Thicke was the most controversial pop star of 2014, and he needed the good kid on his side. When Kendrick Lamar teamed up with Robin Thicke on the single Give It To You, it was a really good time to work with Robin Thicke. He was at the height of his blurred line success. This can be detrimental t shirt to panty that's your credential, your cotton candy. I need a fist for I off the NC hope that convince you. His verse is definitely the best thing about the song. But again, sometimes if you're going to be a commercially viable artist, you need to make songs people can play at a party. And that's what that is. Even though I don't think the track set the world on fire, it was still a great platform for Kendrick when he performed it at the VMAs. Yeah, that is just shot into front rooms across the world. So a huge deal. No, no, we talking about peace. A piece of yours, a piece of mine. A piece of mine, one nation. Under a group. This is a world. This is a world premiere. This is a world premiere. I've been through a whole lot. Trial, tribulation, but I know God. Kendrick gave his mantelpiece a test of strength when he cleaned up at the BET Awards. He then smartened up for the cover of the Men of the Year edition of GQ, and even found time to release a short film. And I love myself. The world is again What the people really wanted was new material, and in 2014, he released I. The first taste that we got of Kendrick Lamar's next album is called I, and it marks a bit of a change in direction for him. It's a much more optimistic and upbeat track, which could be where he's going with this next album. He's just teasing people because he puts one thing out and it's just so interesting. And this one samples the Isley Brothers, which is amazing. So it's got that wonderful kind of smooth feel to it anyway, with this wonderful spoken word on top. So we await the album and see what comes next.
I was really impressed by I. It's got some incredible beats. Dr. Dre has worked his magic. I mean, they spent over a year crafting this album. It's been well received by critics. Already there's a buzz in terms of award season. Could it get nominated for Rap Album of the Year? And let's see if it'll take Kendrick Lamar to the next level. Kendrick Lamar is one of the biggest upcoming rappers from the West Coast scene at the moment. He provides an insider's point of view into the world of gang violence without being part of it. Kendrick Lamar is an artist with a heart and a conscience, I think, and it's won him millions of fans across the world. Kendrick Lamar is a force to be reckoned with, and he's on the ascendancy. He's going to be around for a long time to come. I went to war last night. I can never see the message, I can never take the lead, I can never bother we live in here, no more feeling in my